One of the most exciting and frustrating things about the field of AI is it moves at a breakneck speed, so fast in fact that it can be really hard to catch up with it all. Every new week there's a product or service to learn about or some kind of AI breakthrough and it's really a recipe for fear of missing out or FOMO especially if you work in the tech industry and you feel like you should know these things. The biggest news on anyone's lips this month is Sora, a new model by OpenAI that can take your text and turn it into 60 second long videos. Now it can create these videos in high resolution, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And even though it's a research preview, it has blown people's minds and it has caused a little bit of a panic. And that's because these photorealistic videos are 100% fake. So if trusting an anonymous video on social media was a really bad idea before, it is an exceptionally bad idea now. And it can create simulations of fantastical worlds, such as a demo of a Wild West village that just simply doesn't exist. Now, Sora does have some weaknesses, which OpenAI have freely admitted. It doesn't always understand the physics of a complex scene, such as cause and effect. So for instance, it might have somebody take a bite out of a cookie, but a few seconds later, the cookie doesn't have a bite mark in it. And it can mix up spatial details, like things moving from left to right, glass shattering, or having objects just spontaneously appear. But still, this is the worst that AI-generated video is going to get, and it's pretty Pretty impressive as is. Now it's worth pointing out that there is a big difference between making a 60 second flashy demo and a whole movie production. And you've also got to refine videos to give the precise consistent details you need. Also there's no synchronized audio generation with these videos which is a big caveat. But even at this current stage when it came to different events this month I went to and speaking to tech professionals about AI, Sora was on everybody's minds. It was all anybody could talk about. Now even though everybody is talking about Sora, Google has made a lot of announcements this month. The biggest is that it's revealed its answer to Microsoft Copilot, the chatbot that can be used natively inside Windows, M365 applications, Bing, and Edge. I mean, Google did have Duet AI for Google Workspaces, but that's dead and it never really launched anyway. Regardless, this competitor is Gemini for Google Workspaces, and it is big news if you're a company that's operating in a Google Workspace environment. Now, Gemini for Google Workspaces gives you access to the Gemini chatbot in things like Google Docs, Gmail, Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Meet. And as you'd expect, it can help you with writing, designing, organizing, text input, and illustration. Now, the Gemini chatbot is Google's rebrand of the Bard chatbot, and it made the switch this month. Now, if Gemini sounds familiar, like maybe you heard it three months ago, you probably did. Gemini is the same name as Google's flagship AI model, which was launched in December. Now you might've seen the social media videos of an AI being able to see things from a webcam like sheet music and being able to explain what it was seeing. That was Gemini. It was also a claim that Gemini was the first AI that could outperform humans at MMLU tasks. Now, if you're not familiar with that acronym and I wouldn't blame you if you weren't. It means Massive Multitask Language Understanding, a combination of 57 subjects across a broad spectrum of knowledge like math, physics, history, medicine, and ethics. But there was a caveat with this launch. The model that had done this was called Gemini Ultra, and that wasn't the Gemini that was available for public use. Well, now it is. They brought out Gemini Ultra under the new name Gemini Advanced, which is something that you can access with Gemini for Google Workspaces. All right, let's talk cost. Google Workspaces starts at $6 per month per user if you've got the starter package, which you need as a baseline because obviously you can't use an AI in Google Workspaces if you don't have it. The AI add-on is about an extra $20 per month per user on top of that, which is pretty pricey. You've also got to make a one-year commitment, so no month by month. You've got to go in for that full year. There's also a user usage limit. Users can only use Google Gemini features a thousand times per month, and you know, it resets at the end of that month. And it's only available for those who have their language set to English because that is what Gemini has been trained on. There's a Gemini Enterprise plan that is $10 a month more, which allows you to have advanced meetings with translated captions in 15 different languages or more, and full access and usage of Gemini according to Google, but it's unclear exactly what that means at this phase. Continuing on with our Gemini news, Google also announced Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is available for early tests. There's a context window of about 128,000 by standard, but 1 million tokens for developers and enterprise customers in private preview. Now let me break down why that is so cool. 1 million tokens means it can remember or process 700,000 words. Your average novel is 100,000 words. In the other context, that's 30,000 lines of code, 11 hours of audio, or one hour of video. That produces comparable quality to Ultra, but uses less compute, which is great because it uses less energy, saving money, and creating faster iteration cycles. However, this is a bit of an odd decision because Gemini Ultra is the selling point of the new Gemini for Google Workspaces offering. And a week after it launched, they said that there's a flashier version, which doesn't make Ultra look that Ultra. 
Google has also announced Gemma, a series of free open weight models built on similar technology to the more powerful Gemini model. These are lightweight models that can work on a developer laptop or a desktop computer, and they're designed to be fine-tuned with multiple frameworks. And they're also very compatible with Google Cloud for really obvious reasons. And this is likely a play to match Meta, who have been releasing open weight models such as Llama, Llama 2 since February last year. And that contrasts a lot with OpenAI's GPT Turbo, which you can only access through that chat GPT application or via the cloud and it won't run locally. All right, enough about Google. What about chat GPT, you might ask? Well, this month, OpenAI said it's testing memory controls for ChatGPT. But currently, ChatGPT doesn't remember anything across all your different conversations, so you got to tell it over and over what's going on, and it's like you're working with Dory from Finding Nemo. With the new memory functionality, you can ask it to remember something specific or let it pick up details itself. So let's say I like it when you give me coding snippets, or I'd like you to put um, meeting notes in bullet points, you know, that kind of thing, or I own a coffee shop. It will take all those things into consideration and remember that when it's giving you a response. Now, previously you had to enter this information manually using the custom instructions tool, which was a bit annoying because you basically had to write an essay on yourself and your different preferences. And a lot of the time you just forget to mention stuff. You can turn off memory at any time or wipe it completely. However, if you're using temporary chat, so your conversations aren't used to train OpenAI's models, you unfortunately can't use this feature. And you've got to open yourself up to that risk or forego using this new feature entirely. Additionally, ChatGPT now has an app mentions function that can bring custom personalities called GPTs into any conversation using the app symbol. Now, GPTs are built to do a certain kind of task or know about a certain topic. So this allows you to have a set of AI variations that focus on that one thing at your beck and call. So if you're in a chat, you can call one up that works as a chef or as a wellness advisor and then ask them different questions, which, you know, is pretty cool when you think about it. Also in fun news, ChatGPT went a little bit peculiar this month with users reporting unexpected rambling outputs from the AI assistant. For example, one user shared a question about dog food that had given to ChatGPT, which developed into the following response. Dibby this round of law, or lend a moan to my kindly, Cosmo Cavalcade, gives you the heel in to commence. Let's prate, or mind walk over into the kind of twin and feel, fine tune and fine to live. Yes, really. Anyway, the cause was that the large language model was trying to map numbers to words and picked the wrong ones, producing word sequences that made no sense. Apparently this was caused by inference kernels producing incorrect results while in certain GPU configurations and has been fixed now. Just another reminder that ChatGPT and other AI generative AI solutions like this don't actually have a brain. Anyway, I'm a bit sad that this is being fixed because now there's no more delightful nonsense coming out for me to quote. And that's it. By the time you've watched this, probably several more things have happened in the AI space and I'm sure we'll cover it in AI this month, next month. Anyway, as always, keep being awesome, gurus.